What we have studied so far is the rhythm of the simple meter. Simple meters occur when each beat divides into two, as shown. In the simple duple meter of 2-2, for example, where each measure contains two beats and each beat has the value of a half note, each half note can be divided into two quarter notes. Each quarter note can be divided into two eighth notes. Each eighth note can be divided into two sixteenth notes, etc. In the same way, when we have a simple duple meter of 2-4, for example, where each measure contains two beats and each beat has the value of a quarter note, each quarter note can be divided into two eighth notes, which can be divided into two sixteenth notes, etc. Compound meters occur when we divide each beat into three. Because of the way the accents fall in a group of two beats as opposed to a group of three divisions, our ears hear a competition for attention that leads our brains to believe that we are actually hearing two sets of beats. Notice that a time signature is not associated with any of our compound meters. Notice also that the basic beats depicted in the upper portion of the staves consist of dotted notes. This is because when we combine the sets of three notes in the lower portion of our staves, those three notes are equal in value to the dotted notes above them. A traditional time signature, in this case, would have to look something like these time signatures are technically correct. For example, a time signature of 2-4 dot would in fact be indicating that there are two beats per measure and that each beat is valued at a dotted quarter note. However, in reading such a time signature, it would be very easy to overlook the dot and the piece would become very confusing very quickly. So, it was decided many years ago to make a time signature based on the total number of beat divisions in the measure and the value of each division. Thus, 2-4 dot becomes 6-8 and it is left to the performer to do the math in finding the true number of beats per measure and the actual value of each beat. The math will always consist of dividing the top number of the compound time signature by 3 to find the number of beats per measure and combining the bottom number in a set of 3 to find the value of the dotted note representing each beat. Thus, taking a few examples from the illustration, in 6-4, six, 6 divided by 3 equals 2 beats and 3 quarter notes combined to a dotted half note. In 9-8, nine, 9 divided by 3 equals 3 beats and 3 eighth notes combined to a dotted quarter note. In 12-16, 12, 12 divided by 3 equals 4 beats and 3 sixteenth notes combined to a dotted eighth. And in 6-32, six, 6 divided by 3 equals 2 beats and 3 thirty-second notes combined to a dotted sixteenth note. Now let's talk about tied notes. Tied notes are used to combine two or more notes into a single duration. For example, as in the illustration, second staff, last measure, in 12-8 time, we can use a tie to combine a dotted quarter note and a dotted whole note, giving us a total count duration of 15 eighth notes. Or, as in the third staff, second measure, in 3-2 time, to combine two half notes into a single whole note. Additionally, notes can be tied within a measure or across a bar line. Ties within a measure are usually made to make clear to the performer exactly where the beats occur. For example, in this example, we have the opening two measures of Claude Debussy's Claire de Lune. The piece is written in 9-8 time, which we know is a compound triple meter. As with all compound meters, we divide the top number by 3 to determine that we have 3 beats per measure and that each beat equals a dotted quarter note. Each beat can be further divided into a set of 3 eighth notes, giving us the following rhythmic count. We see that Debussy begins in the left hand on division 2 of the first beat and in the right hand on division 3 of the first beat. 
Because of the ties, the tones are sustained in the left hand through the end of the measure and in the right hand to the end of beat two. In the right hand, the tones begin again on beat three of the measure and are sustained through the first division of the first beat of measure two. In the left hand, the tones begin again on beat one of measure two and are sustained through the end of the measure. If we now look at the score, listening with the ties removed while having a click track in the background, it should become clear that the written notes visually align with the auditory beats in a way that allows us to see the rhythmic pattern as well as hear it. I'll play it again just in case that went by a little quickly. Ties across the bar line are meant to shift the emphasis from the normally strong beat or beat division to the normally weaker beat or beat division. Be aware that this shift can also be performed using ties within the measure as well, but a tie across a bar line almost always causes the shift. For example, let's listen to this excerpt from the popular ragtime piece written by Scott Joplin in 1902. Notice that in the left hand, the beat is divided into eighth notes. It is steady and counted normally, one and two and. In the right hand, the beat has been divided into sixteenth notes and have been tied as shown. The ties create a syncopation, or shifting, of the overall rhythm from the strong to the weak beats, which gives us the signature ragtime rhythmic pattern. But now, let's listen to the excerpt again removing the ties. Although the signature ragtime rhythmic pattern remains, the syncopation is largely lost within the underlying beat. If we remove the ties and force the right hand to play in sync with the beat, we get We end up taking a song with a relatively interesting rhythmic pattern and turning it into a rather clunky, uninteresting mess. Finally, we'll introduce you to special groupings of beat divisions called tuplets. Tuplets are sets of beat divisions that are not normal to the time signature, but are played within the same time frame as the normal beat divisions they replace. For example, in the first measure of our illustration, we see that the time signature is 4-4 four, four, and that we have four beats consisting of one quarter note per beat. Each quarter note beat is normally divided into two eighth notes. Our first tuplet is called a triplet, which consists of three eighth notes played in the same amount of time as our normal division of two eighth notes would be played. This sounds like Note that the triplet is marked with the number 3 below the grouping in order to make the division clear to the performer. In the next example, we have our second tuplet, called a quintuplet, meaning that our normal division of two eighth notes will now be replaced within the same space of time with a group of five eighth notes. This sounds like... Note the number 5 below the grouping to make the division clear. In measure 2, we find a septuplet where our normal division of two eighth notes has been replaced by a set of seven eighth notes to be played in the same space of time. This sounds like... Note the number 7 below the grouping to make the grouping clear to the performer. In the next example, we see a nintuplet, which is a series of nine eighth notes replacing a group of two eighth notes. We can see a real-world example of the nintuplet in Beethoven's Pathétique Sonata. In this excerpt, looking in the fourth measure, we find a nintuplet. <laughs> 
where a series of nine one twenty eighth notes has replaced a single sixteenth note. This looks nearly impossible to perform due to the apparent notational speed, but notice that Beethoven has indicated a tempo of grave, or about thirty to forty beats per minute, which means that the notes are played much more slowly than they look. This passage, when performed, sounds like This concludes our discussion on compound meters, tide notes, and tuplets. In the next and final lesson on duration of tone, we will examine asymmetrical beat patterns and indicating the tempo and mood of a piece.